In this lab, we'll understand how to install Airflow 2.5 in a Python 3.0 virtual environment on a Google Cloud virtual instance. All the source code and instructions used in this lab can be found on our GitHub repository. You'll find the link in the description. If you're interested in learning big data, Hadoop, and Spark from scratch, and want to understand how to deploy machine learning models in production, check out our top-rated courses on Udemy. The link is also in the description. If you don't have a Google Cloud account, check the link below to learn how to sign up for Google Cloud's free tier and get $300 in free credit to try out various services. Let's search for Google Cloud and click on the cloud .google.com link. If you don't have an account, you can create one. Let's sign in. Now that I've signed in, I can see the Google Cloud Console link here. Click on Go to Console. This is the Google Cloud main page. At the bottom, you'll see quick access links to different services. We are interested in virtual instances, or VM instances, and we'll be installing Airflow on one of the virtual machines on Google Cloud. Search for VM instances and click on Create Instance. We'll keep the instance name, region, and zone as default values. Under the machine type, we'll select a 32 gigabyte machine. You can select a machine with lower RAM for this lab, but let's go with the 32 gigabyte machine. That's the maximum available on Google Cloud's free tier. We'll leave all other options as default and select Allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Later, we'll launch Airflow on this Google Cloud instance. The Airflow UI is available at port 8080 by default. That's why HTTP traffic needs to be allowed so we can access the Airflow web UI. For now, just select these two options and proceed. Click Create to create the virtual machine. The virtual machine or instance will be ready in a moment. It's ready now. At any point, if you want to change network settings to allow or restrict traffic to a specific port, you can do that under the Network Details section. Next, we'll click on this SSH link and log into the virtual machine instance. This gives us a web-based command line interface to interact with the virtual machine. Now we have logged into the machine. As a first step, let's update all the packages on this Linux distribution. The command for that is sudo apt-get update. Next, we'll install the Python pip library. Using that, we'll install Airflow. The command for that is sudo apt-get install python3 pip. pip has been installed. Let's check the Python version first. It's Python 3.9.2. Similarly, we can check the pip version by running the command pip version. This pip uses Python 3.9. This is the one we need to install Airflow. The default Python on this machine is Python 3. Instead of the default Python, we'll create an isolated virtual environment and install Airflow within that. Let's clear the terminal. 
To create a virtual environment, we need the virtual environment library. Let's install that first. The command is sudo pip3 install virtual env. You can use either sudo pip3 or sudo pip, both will work. Using the virtual environment library, we'll create a virtual environment. The command for that is virtual env python3 venv. A virtual environment has been created under the home directory. Next, let's activate it. We'll do that with the command source vnv bin activate. Now we are within the virtual environment. You can see venv appearing in parentheses here. Within this virtual environment, we'll install Airflow. We'll install the latest version of Airflow, which is 2.5.0 as of January 2023. It requires a constraint file. You can visit the Airflow website and check the latest command whenever you're installing. We'll use constraints for Python 3.8. As of now, there is no constraints file available for Python 3.9. But with the 3.8 constraint file, we should be able to create an Apache Airflow instance of version 2.5.0 within the Python 3.9 environment. Let's run this command. Airflow installation is complete. Next, we'll create a directory for our project. Let's create a directory called Airflow Project under the home directory. We need to ensure the Airflow home environment variable is set to this directory. For that, the command is export Airflow home and specify the path of this project directory. After that, we'll be instantiating the Airflow database by running Airflow DB init. This creates a SQLite database where all our Airflow configurations will be stored. We'll cover Airflow architecture and its different components later on. For now, just install Airflow using these commands so we can see something up and running before diving into how Airflow works. After running Airflow DB init, we can use the ls command to see the files that have been created. One of the key files in this directory is airflow.cfg, which contains the configuration for our Airflow instance. Let's check that file using the nano command. Using the nano text editor, you can view and also make changes to this file. One of the configurations at the top of this file is the DAGs folder directory. We'll cover what DAGs are later. For now, just note that this config file has a DAGs folder directory, which is a directory under your project folder where you need to keep all your new DAGs. Let's press Ctrl X to exit. We'll now create a DAGs directory here. Next, before creating any new DAG, we need to start the Airflow scheduler and also the Airflow UI. Let's see how to start the scheduler. The command for that is Airflow Scheduler. And this should start the Airflow Scheduler on this instance. This should be running in this terminal. We'll open a new terminal. To launch the web server, go to the Google Cloud VM instance page. Click on the SSH link here. Before running any Airflow commands, ensure you are in the same virtual environment and that the Airflow home directory path is set. Let's do that. First, 
Use the source command to activate the virtual environment. Then set the Airflow home. After that, we'll launch the Airflow web server and go to the Airflow UI to explore its various features. Before we do that, we need to create an admin user, which we'll use to log into the Airflow website. The command to create an Airflow user is this. You need to specify the username and its role. We'll say admin, then provide the first name, last name, and an email ID in case any issue occurs on this instance. Notifications would be sent to this email. After this, it prompts for a password. Type any password. I'll type admin and confirm it as admin. At this point, an admin user has been configured, which we can use to log into the Airflow UI. We can quickly check the list of users by running the Airflow Users List command. And we'll see the user here. Next, we launch the Airflow web server at port 8080. It's now running on this virtual machine instance. On port 8080, we'll go to the VM instance page, find the IP address of the VM, and use that along with the port to launch the Airflow UI. On the VM instance page, let's copy the external IP and open it in a browser tab. Let's enter the IP address and port 8080. This takes us to the Airflow UI login page. We log in using the user ID and password we configured. We are now logged into the Airflow UI. Here we can see all the DAGs, the concept of DAGs, the scheduler, and the web server. These topics will be covered in detail later. Now, to complete the installation and check if everything is working fine, let's create a sample DAG and try to view it within the UI. We have a sample DAG. This DAG simply echoes FutureX skill success using the bash operator. This is our Hello World DAG, which we'll create on the VM instance and later see running in the Airflow UI. Just copy this code and head over to the VM Instances page. Create a new SSH window, activate the virtual environment, and set the Airflow home directory, just like we did earlier. Now we'll go to the Airflow project directory, and then into the DAGs directory. Here we'll create that Python file. Using Nano, we'll create a file called futurexskillsdag.py. And paste the code we copied earlier from the notebook. All the instructions and code are available on our GitHub repository. You will find the link in the description. Press Ctrl X to exit and save the changes. Press Y and hit Enter. Now we have a DAG stored under the DAGs folder. As shown earlier, within the Airflow config file, the DAGs directory points to this specific location where we have created and stored the new DAG. Let's execute the DAG. We'll go back to the DAGs directory and execute the file. The DAG has now been executed. We'll go to the Airflow UI to check if the DAG is showing up there. 
Refresh this page and search for FutureX skills. We can see the new DAG that we just created. Let's click on it and go to the graph view to see the DAG. We have a very simple task within the DAG called print date. We're not actually printing the date, we're just echoing a statement to the console. That's what the task does in this DAG. It's a very simple DAG. Let's execute it. Trigger the DAG. It takes a few seconds for the DAG to execute. We can see a green indicator here. Click on print date and go to the logs. Here we can see the FutureX skills success output message. The DAG has been executed successfully. This is how you can install Airflow on a virtual machine and get started. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more informative content on cloud, data, AI, and generative AI. Hit the bell icon to receive future notifications.